In the darkest days of Canadian winter, it can be easy to view snow as a hindrance instead of the invaluable natural resource it is. But Bill Floyd has made it his mission to keep snow from being taken for granted by looking at the bigger picture. It stores fresh water during the winter months and it releases it during the spring and summer. And that keeps streams cool but it's a sustainable supply of, of water for people that need it and for ecosystems that need it. Snowpack is the snow that collects in an area over a season. Together with glaciers, it makes up the vast majority of the cryosphere, the frozen water component of the Earth, similar to the hydrosphere or atmosphere. As part of a Hakai research collaboration with the University of Northern British Columbia, Vancouver Island University, and the province of British Columbia, Bill Floyd and collaborator Brian Menounos are exploring the role that snowpack and glaciers play in the hydrology of key watersheds along BC's central and southern coasts. For me, I've always loved playing on snow. Growing up as a kid, I played hockey, um, had snowball fights with my friends, and I skied, and, and all of these things that within me created a real passion for, eventually later in life, studying it. Just as water is an absolutely essential component in an ecosystem, so is snow. Sort of like a lake above a dam, snow is basically a frozen storage system for water. As the snow melts, the running water transports nutrients to the environment. To find out just how much water is out there being stored as snow, researchers must take snow depth and density readings. Traditionally, the team has had to go out into the field and do this manually by sticking probes into the snowpack. But with a little help from the air, the team can now create 3D renderings of the snowpack. We set up the drone on an autopilot and it flies in a grid pattern just like mowing the lawn, taking pictures as it goes along. And then we can take those pictures, put them into our software and Based on looking at pictures of an object from different angles, we can find its position in space. And then when we do that, we get millions and millions of points of snow, trees, and rocks, and we can get the height of the snow over a whole area. The team has the drone fly the same route in the summer and winter. To calculate the seasonal snowpack, the software subtracts the summer readings from the winter ones, creating a 3D rendering like this of Vancouver Island's Mount Kane. Drones aren't the only useful tool, though. The Cryosphere research team also uses satellite images and plane-based LIDAR, which is a way to map using lasers, and which is especially useful for tracking glacial change. They'll be studying glacierized river basins like Bella Coola, Squamish, and this one, Klini Klini. This project is utilizing new technology, so we can literally take millions of snow depth measurements across hundreds of square kilometers of the land over, over entire watersheds. Being able to measure it properly, like this project is trying to do, will allow us to really quantify how much the value of that snow being stored and what happens when, it, when it's gone. While the scenery is hard to beat, tracking snow and glaciers in this way reveal the effects of climate change on a landscape. If we have climate change that's predicting 50% less snowpack, how is that gonna impact the amount of water in that stream? After all, it's easy to take something like snow for granted until it starts disappearing. But by studying the inherent value in snow and ice, the team hopes others will come to see the beauty in it, as they have. The Central Coast is a, it has examples of glaciers that people just don't get to see. And I'm fortunate enough that we get to go there and we get to fly over these landscapes and, and you see the, the sheer beauty of of ice, ice-covered mountains, it's incredible. <laughs>